Welcome biologists and in this session we're going to have a look at the significance of meiosis in life cycles but we're also going to have a look at what homologous chromosomes are in, in preparation for our next video which is looking at the stages of meiosis which involve crossing over and independent assortment. So homologous pairs of chromosomes. As you can see here I have one chromosome from my mother and one chromosome from my father. Now both of these chromosomes contain the same genes but they might be different versions of the same gene, so therefore they might be alleles. So for example, they both might code for eye color, it's the same gene, but they might be different alleles. So this one might code for blue eyes and that one might code for brown eyes, that's different alleles. Now it's important to know that these contain sister chromatids, so duplicated DNA as well. Now the definition of homologous pairs of chromosome, it's in a red box, it's taken directly from the mark scheme is where I have one maternal and one paternal. I have the same genes but different alleles and the central mare is in the same place and it has the same length. Now, in this next picture, I've got a number of different chromosomes. I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at pairing up those homologous pairs of chromosomes. I have seen a similar exam question to this. So you could pause the video now and try and pair them up. Okay, so the answers here we should get a homologous pairs of chromosome, I've got B and F, A and E, and D and C. So I've got three lots of homologous pairs of chromosomes. Now, at the beginning of meiosis in prophase one, which we'll look at shortly in the next video, um, this is where my homologous pairs of chromosomes form a bivalent. Basically, the, the pairs, a bivalent is a pair of homologous chromosomes and it's needed in meiosis at the start of meiosis. So that's what homologous pairs of chromosomes are. And the next thing we need to know before we look at the stages of meiosis is what is the point of meiosis? Why do we need it? So meiosis, um, this is the overview of meiosis and meiosis is made up of two stages. We've got meiosis one, which is the reduction division where I go from, um, I reduce the genetic information by half um, and at the end of meiosis two, as you can see here, I produce four genetically different haploid gametes. Now haploid means I have half the genetic information present within my gametes. So a gamete is a sperm or an egg cell, so you sex cells. And that is really, really important that the sex cells contain half the genetic information. Because when these gametes fuse together, they create a diploid zygote. Diploid means a full set of chromosomes and a zygote means a newly fertilized egg. So that's the importance of meiosis. Now in an exam, I have seen several questions asking you to identify where meiosis and mitosis are. Now for this, you just need to be really clever and look out for if the genetic information has been reduced. If it has, it's meiosis. If the, if the genetic um, information has not been reduced, then it will be mitosis, okay? But in meiosis, the genetic information is halved. I get haploid gametes, haploid half the genetic information, and they're all genetically different. Now, this genetically different and this genetic variation that arises in meiosis is a result of two main things. Crossing over that occurs in prophase one and independent assortment, which occurs in metaphase one and two, which you'll look at in the next video on the stages of meiosis. So there we've covered the basic information of what we need to know before we get stuck into what the stages of meiosis are. So in the next video, we'll have a look at the rest of the specification point. Guys, in your exams, please remember, use good scientific terminology that will get you as many marks as possible. And good luck.